Welcome in to Remedial Adventuring 401, a new Real Play TTRPG podcast. I'm Adam Souza, and I will be your guide through this fantastical journey as your DM. Prepare for an epic tale with six adventurers, each bearing the weight of their past failures from their original parties. Now thrown together in the Remedial class, they're on a quest for redemption and their elusive adventuring license in the captivating realm of Alorium. So, gather around the virtual table, wield your dice, and brace for a tale of second chances, daring escapades, and the pursuit of greatness in the setbacks. Welcome to Remedial Adventuring 401, where new legends emerge from failure. Yeah, so you guys had quite a time last time. The last thing you had done was gone to the, the airship headquarters, which you had found closed and under investigation and after a period of time of analyzing the investigation itself you have deemed it worthy enough that you didn't need to intervene and you decided to leave it be but you were on your way to gladys agathis's office up over in the ministry and i believe as you left cassandra lit a bunch of candles on fire possibly i forget well, I was going to ask if we moved that 10 square meters of um, dirt out from in front of the other door. Well, as of now, you haven't. But if you wish to have done that, sure. <laughs> I mean, let's leave a little mystery in the world. <laughs> sure. They'll have something to discover as they leave. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make your way over to the ministry, which is actually not that far from the headquarters of this uh, airship company, because that was on the way. As you approach the ministry, it's a building that you have been to a few times, and you enter just like before. You go down the hall, you know where to go. What I would like as a group, like this isn't a dungeon or anything, so you don't have to worry too much, too much. But just like who's in the front and who's in the back. Uh, I has usually straggles behind if he can. That's fair. What about Hollybrook? Where's Hollybrook? Hollybrook would probably be towards the middle. Makes sense, makes sense. And uh, what about Myrtle? Uh, in the middle, I'm small. Okay. <laughs> so we got Hollybrook and Myrtle in the middle. We've got Ihaz towards the back. And what about Cassandra? Well, if everyone's in the middle, the middle doesn't actually exist. So I think I'm going to be <laughs> at the back. <laughs> Gotta bring this party back to the middle. <laughs> I'd go with my good buddy Carbon Fang. Okay. I'd, so, I'd be near the front. Cool. So Carbon Fang and Eustace, just give me survival checks to quickly get to this office. And then I has, I would like a history check. Survival check to get to an office? It's just how, how quickly you get through. <laughs> There's a lot of people. Not great. <laughs> Not very quickly. A lot of water cooler talk. <laughs> so Carbon Fang, she's ready to go. Eustace, you're like getting caught up with people. Um, Both in game and out of game. Uh. <laughs> but um, eventually you guys make your way to the office and you see the office and you see Gladys actually like open the door as you approach which is maybe odd because she didn't, you didn't tell her like I'm coming at this time or whatever. But as she opens the door she sees you and she's waving you in, she's waving you in. I has with your in history check yeah so the way that she says it she doesn't say like oh welcome welcome or good to see you or anything like that she's just like get inside get inside it triggers like a memory of yours from maybe one and a half years ago bef before this group of people and the same thing was being said to you and you were on some type of mission and you weren't really paying much attention but Nope. They're kind of like, <laughs> they're trying to instill like, come on, get in here, get in here now. And you have Darian, who's a human rogue, kind of yelling at you to enter in. Everybody else has gone into this next room. You're kind of wandering about in the corridor of some dungeon. Uh, how would you react in that point? Um, I look around, double check, like, everybody really in? <laughs> sure. Um, you either give me a perception or a survival check to just make sure everybody's really in. Nope. Okay. Uh, with a 13, um, I mean, you see the right number of faces inside this room, uh, and there's really no one behind you in the corridor. But suddenly, what you do here in the corridor is like the skittering of some type of 
either nails or maybe insect. You, you're not quite sure. You weren't paying attention. You don't. You don't even know who you're running from right now. <laughs> but your your party is very struggling to get you into the room. Okay, fine. I'm coming. <laughs> you make your way in. They slam the door. Um, the skittering gets louder. You hear them like up against the door. Eventually, it, it comes down. As they do that, you have this dwarf cleric come up to you, and he's just kind of like, where were you? You should have been here like 10 minutes ago. And the others kind of, you know, reflect that, but don't really say anything. But you can tell, like, they're all thinking the same thing. But you're not really too pressed about that. Like, you're everybody survived and nothing bad happened. Mm -hmm. As you do that, give me a insight check. Very strong three. <laughs> so everything's fine. Everything is fine yeah. and nothing is possibly wrong with this. With a three on your insight check, the thing that you don't realize is that between them already, even in front of you, they're already kind of calling you a liability. Not so much in those words, but amongst each other, they are definitely pointed out that you are their weak link. They seem to be much more involved and much more spearheaded in this mission, whereas you're kind of just along for the ride. No one seems to hate you, even without the failing of your insight check. No one seems to really hate you, hate you, but they're, they're just considering you a liability. You are a team, and the whole team needs to be able to finish. So without having heard any of that, but you're all in kind of just like an enclosed space, uh, where would I has his mind go towards? Um, his mind would go towards if there was anything neat he saw in that hallway. Maybe what was that skittering noise that everybody's so happy about? <laughs> but um, yeah, he's he's really. Nice. Are you intrigued enough to like peek out again and try to look into the hallway or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, give me a luck check, just a, a D20. With a 12, um, you open the door, and there's nothing, like, on the outside of the door, but you can see, like, shapes moving down the hall and, like, a flickering of the candlelight. But as you look around, you hear all of your adventuring partners yell out your name, and, like, two or three hands grab you in the back and pull you back into the room. As that memory kind of plays for you in the same way you hear your your name again but this time by Gladys and she kind of just with a, with a gentle hand on your shoulder kind of pushes you into the room as everybody has already entered and you are once again the last one to enter the room mm -hmm. entering into this room though you see Gladys and she has like a bunch of papers out on her desk she has a secondary table that's filled again with more papers there's like a box filled with different documents and things like that and she shuts the door behind you as you come in towards the back. And she gestures towards, she's got a couple of chairs and like a, a love seat. So there's like two seats on a, on a couch and another three seats and just like regular chairs. She's like, sit down, sit down. I looked into what you had told me. It's, it's not good. Uh, I don't know exactly all the details. Of course, it's only been a night. But we have people investigating the headquarters of this airship company. And we also have a few interior investigations amongst uh, not necessarily the ministry, but different affiliations with the ministry. And what I would like is anybody at this point can give me an insight check as you kind of watch her explain what's happening. Oh, if you haven't picked up on it already, I has it's not. <laughs> Hollybrook, you got a 27 on your insight check. You can tell that this woman has not slept probably all night. And she's very stressed out. And she's trying to keep her composure as she, like, tells you everything. She's definitely, not only does she not want to lie to you, she also probably doesn't have the energy right now to lie to you. Um, <laughs> or at, at least not lie and keep her composure and not fall asleep all at the same time. So... She's prioritizing keeping composure, keeping calm, but you can tell that something is bothering her even more than this incident that you have reported. Even with that, she kind of looks at you and realizes like you have seen that in her 
And she says, this incident is, of course, tragic. And as we get more and more information, there are only more and more questions. And unfortunately, we don't know who this ties back to as far as like an individual. If not an individual, perhaps some party or parties within even the ministry itself. We have people who have done things that don't make sense. They have alibis, but those alibis are subject to question. And with that, because you have brought this to me, I have chosen to trust in you more than I would trust in other uh, people of your capacity. There's definitely some type of, I loathe to, I loathe to say conspiracy, but in lack of a better term, so be it. And I don't know who necessarily to trust and not trust. As you know, uh, my position, of course, is high ranking, but I have earned this through my own abilities. And I know that a lot of people in similar positions have not. However, you as adventurers have only gotten to where you are because of your abilities. So I have decided to confide in you as you have brought this to my attention as well what are you doing what i want from you though is to continue what you're doing because if it becomes obvious that you are aware that something is wrong then we lose that advantage i do however want you to not necessarily to the face of anyone in power but i want you to question everything if some if someone asks you to do something on behalf of the ministry accept it but also question whether or not what you're being told is correct i haven't had enough time to really get into the nitty-gritty of this but what i can tell from what you had brought up and she brings over a, a small box of documents and it's labeled with the name of the ship that had crashed and she says what i have discovered is a lot has gone into this incident and unfortunately the facts don't look good the ship in question and she i know this isn't really a thing yet but who do you think amongst yourselves has the most relationship with this woman like who would she pr like primarily be talking to like obviously she's talking to all of you but who would she most like face basically <laughs> not it <laughs> um Oh, I don't I don't know. That's a good question. Who would you know, who would she who would she have the closest relationship toward? Because you've only had like minor interactions. Um the very first interaction kind of doesn't count. And then the second interaction You know what? Who who told her in the in the last session? I forget. Oh Ooh. I think it was um Eustace, wasn't it? Told her what? The truth. Like told her what happened and what you had discovered. Oh, I don't. Oh, I. I remember voting. I feel <laughs> like this would have the most authority-looking, um, you know, appearance. All right. Almost. So, I I think that works. So she's going to hand this a specific paper from this box to you, and then you just just give me a perception check. It's a DC five. Like you just need to not get less than a five. And um. It is a picture of the airship, and nothing seems weird at Wait, all. Te technical question: uh -huh. Can I can I use a point of inspiration to reroll that? If you still have inspiration, yes, you can. <laughs> I do. This feels like a very plot relevant thing <laughs> that I will sacrifice my inspiration to reroll. <laughs> Hey, that's a 12. That's better. <laughs> better than the four. Um, <laughs> so with a 12, uh, you look at the page, and it's a very detailed schematic of how this ship works. Like It, it talks about what the different parts of the ship are, what the hull is made out of, everything. And like it, it explains everything about the ship. And one of the first things that you notice is there's absolutely zero evidence of those turbines on the side of the ship having ever existed oh. to start with. And as you kind of look at that and you put two and two together and you remembered also how like, oh, they sparked as you were crashing 
but that doesn't make sense either like why would they spark there's no electricity there's no fire it was just magic and you realize like the whole thing was rigged from the start to put it you know concisely like from beginning this was planned this wasn't an accident this wasn't even a crime of opportunity this is something that was premeditated and had to have been at least somewhat related to the actual company itself because no one would have let an airship out of the terminal with these giant things on the sides if that wasn't supposed to be there and as oh. you as you realize that you hand her back the um the document and she says as i said i don't know who this comes back to i can't put a pin in any specific person yet um i don't know if this was an inside job from the company i don't know if this is someone from the ministry or someone altogether different because of this i would ask that you you, you are of course welcome to travel but please do not travel too far we would like you to be able to return quickly if needed or i would like that at least but yes i i don't i don't really have much instructions for you but i do want to at least confirm your suspicions and to let you know that if anything i believe you and i believe what's going on and i consider myself i know it's very hard in this instance to trust anyone but i personally don't care who it is i'm going to find them whether it be someone that i know or don't know or trust or don't trust if someone is doing these things it's it, it's bad for everyone so with that first i would like to give you some points for bringing this to my attention this counts as a quest even though it wasn't a predetermined quest i am classifying it as a quest hereby deputizing a quest for you could i please have your licenses all right yeah she'll she'll take your license and she gives it to you she puts it as a a low level one and she even tells you she says i can't put it to be too high because i don't want to raise suspicion however with a class d i can at least give you a full 10 points and no one will bat an eye so with that you, you all a couple class d's <laughs> I did have to yell at a giant lion lady and parachute off a falling airship. Give me a um give me a persuasion check, but with disadvantage. Can I join her for that to uh Okay, you know what? Sure. Give me a persuasion check with flat because he's giving you adva advantage. My inspiration still. Can I do it with advantage? Uh, well, with your with inspiration, you don't have to use it until you know you need to use it. So uh, roll first, and if you don't like it, then you can re-roll using your inspiration. Yeah, roll okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> don't want the nine. Okay, a 12. With a 12, she says, I, I can't give you multiple class Ds without any explanation. If you were to give me a full report of your experience with this creature that you have just mentioned please give it to me and uh i might be able to work that i can't give it to you right now but you know if you were to write up a report and tell me what happened and what the quest was and how it affects i'm literally us. already writing on paper <laughs> she she nods she nods she says just uh bring it back to me once you're ready and then i can give you more points as for the rest of you please stay safe I don't know who you can trust, even within the ministry itself. Outside the ministry, I have no clue. If you have made allies, you may wish to rely on them. But like I said, question everything and everyone. I wish I had more to give you right now, but that's where we leave off. But what I would suggest is continuing on with quests to make it look like nothing's wrong. Not, not that nothing's wrong, but that you don't know something's wrong. That's all I have for you currently. Uh, I apologize. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. So she has kind of put the ball in your court now. Um, if you have questions or want to talk to her about anything else, you may do so. Or if you just wish to head out, you can do that as well. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, I guess I would share with the others that paper, the information that uh, I don't know if they saw it, but it's mm -hmm. just... 
assume information was shared. Yeah, we'll, we'll retroactively say that. As you saw it, you just announced it into the air. <laughs> like, oh, there's no there's no turbines. <laughs> there's no t- <laughs> what was it we kept saying last time? It was like mana can't melt uh, steel beams or something <laughs> like that. Mana can't melt airship beams. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It, it was true. Hmm. I'd say we just continue with the quest. It sounds like as tired and as exhausted as she is, we probably won't get much out of her at this time. And you can always come back. She's still going to be here. Sure. Well, that we know of. True. She intends to. She intends, she intends to. to <laughs> she intends to continue being alive. <laughs> and definitely not a bloody corpse when we come back in and then the authorities are called immediately on us. <laughs> You're the last people to see her alive. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Well, what time of day is it? Evening? So this is after your whole morning and afternoon. So it's probably early afternoon. Okay. All right. I would suggest if we don't have any questions to go to a non-adventurer's academy guild area someplace that also doesn't have the security cameras that uh we have encountered blues blues clues security (laughs) cameras perhaps a walk in the park (laughs) to discuss our next moves maybe i can hold up another cat (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah, do we uh where's where's a park or a public place where it's very noisy uh in relation to the quest board uh, so there, there are multiple quest boards. So there is one close to a park, like literally on the same street as a park. Okay. Anyone have any other suggestions? Mm-mm. Nope. Sounds like a plan. So she nods, uh, wishes you well, and as you guys leave, the last thing I would like, as from I has again, is a perception check, please. Hey. Cool. <laughs> you, as you are about to like leave the building itself, um, which is like this big grand hallway, you see up on like a third floor where there's an uh, overhanging balcony of a hallway where there's like railings. You see a woman pass by, and two times ago that you were in this building, once again you saw this same woman pass by in the hallway, and you chased after her, but unfortunately due to a few bad rolls you weren't able to catch up you see her once again pass over you don't get any face but you recognize at least like oh it's the same person but she's also on the third floor with no clear way of giving to her so there's no way of catching up so you guys leave the building and go to the park yep okie dokie um you go to the park it is a nice park this is a park close to the ministry so this is a little bit nicer It's taken care of. The plants are pruned and well-kept. Lots of colorful flowers, topiaries. There's a fountain in the center. And, you know, just in general of being in a urban environment, not completely silent, but because of the park and the wide expanse of air, not a lot of sound is traveling. But there's like that white noise of just background. Mm. And we all fall asleep. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, we're at the park, Eustace. Was there something you wanted to discuss? What do you guys think of her? Is she trustworthy? So what's a likelihood of trust? Do we believe what she said? Why don't you use your dice? <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Just like like drawing a six gun or six shooter <laughs> from, a, from his hip. Just immediately just whips him out. All right. Give me a d6. And a five. five. Roll again. <laughs> That's a two. Uh, that's a yes. You trust Okay. Her. I am instantly filled. I, go, I can't tell you why, even though it's very clear why. <laughs> but I think I trust her. <laughs> I, tr- I trusted her before the dice, too. <laughs> very silently whispering to the grass, that bitch is in the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> I think she has her own agenda, but I think we can trust her. One has their own agenda. I want to eat yogurt and lay in the grass. <laughs> Is there a yogurt stand nearby? I don't trust anybody. <laughs> Fair. What, a, what about the one uh, who brings me yogurt? All right, so that's Fair, uh. They brought me yogurt, but I still wouldn't trust them. No, I, I has is slower to pay attention and trust, but going on vibes for a stiff in a weird 
big, massive agency. She seems like somebody who wants to do the right things, even if she doesn't always understand what right is. That's how they get you. It's the CIA. <laughs> she, she watched those commercials about CIA board games <laughs> and gays being accepted, and she's like, well, all right. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, Corrupts absolutely. <laughs> she applied for the uh, uh, foster grandma CIA position. Um, <laughs> bake cookies and topple third world countries. Um, you know, Eustace will will go ahead and kind of pitch that uh, he he doesn't trust her entirely. But if there was someone that seems a little bit more trustworthy than the others. As she does not seem like the type that was built, uh, born with a silver spoon in her mouth, based on her or her background, that she's a little bit. She worked her way up, which hopefully implies she's at least not bought and sold, like maybe the yeah. others, possibly. That, that, that's the main like trepidation of Chrissy's. He's used to being around people who were just handed family so. connections, got them in power, and he, that way. doesn't trust the agency, but. Well, perhaps we, we plan accordingly and uh, maybe come up with a bit of a backup plan should the worst come to happen with with Merit Granny. Uh, we, we trust her about as, as tall as she is. He has his backup plan is getting a bunch of wool and dressing up like a sheep, running <laughs> off to that, to that area that's not on maps anymore. <laughs> the undiscovered country. That is that is a possibility, I guess. <laughs> just there you go. We end the game tonight. We all just dress up as sheep and live our own lives. <laughs> I quit the school, end. drop out, uh, don some wool, and just go hive mind out in the desert. <laughs> just like real life. <laughs> Wake up, sheeple. It's good to be Yeah, yeah, desert. yeah. No kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so she told us to just act normal despite the fact that uh, our academy may have uh, tried to pull a false flag in order to start some kind of war possibly for you know country building or dominion over others remember the main <laughs> <laughs> so um do we tell her next time we speak with her about any of the mysterious things that we encountered d during the, uh, what was it, the Ambassador Ball? Or the... Our dinner? Yeah, our fancy dinner party that we went to to impress investors. As I believe it was her quest, uh, quest card, that also had something that said don't, don't trust them <laughs> on it. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, also, if you want... I don't know if you've already come to this conclusion yourself, but Eustace, if you want to give me either just an intelligence check or an investigation check. Okay, let's see. I'll do an investigation. Okay. You're investigating inside your... God! I am now. throwing <laughs> rocks tonight. Good lord. You, Eustace says what he just says, and then you can kind of see him. He just pauses... And then his nose starts to bleed as he, <laughs> as he tries to have a thought, but it does not work. <laughs> I went into my mind palace and I apparently locked myself out. <laughs> you fell into your mind palace's moat. <laughs> he forgot the code to his mind palace's lock and now he's stuck inside. I gotta, I gotta call the landlord and get the keys. I locked myself out of my mind palace. Who's Everybody, the ex of your mind palace. God. <laughs> Everybody except for Eustace smells burnt toast. <laughs> Am I having a stroke? <laughs> but I guess I guess uh, he'll cut to the short and say, "What information do we continue to share with her? We should review it and prep a little bit if we ever choose to, and maybe some tactical withholding in our own interest. Uh, we're dealing with pretty." Powerful forces here. Information edging. <laughs> Should we also start backing up what we find somewhere? Yes. <laughs> well, definitely not in Eustace's mind palace. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vault. And what goes in never comes out. Uh, so, 
Yeah. I'd say let's just go find a quest and play it by ear. I agree. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. So, as you guys go to the uh, board, Hollybrook, what I would like from you is a specific check because you're going to see a few of these. They're all new. And what I would like from you is going to be either a Arcana check or I guess just a perception check just to see the thing or a survival check if you want to do survival. Okay, so Arcana, perception, or survival? Yep. Uh, let's go with survival. That's the better odds. Hey, a 28. Nat 20 plus 8. For the Nat 20, you see there are maybe three or four moderate level quests. And these quests all involve things, and it's it's described as like, oh, you're protecting the city, you're protecting the country and the interests of this or whatnot. But there's definitely like this kind of like, I don't want to say a footnote because it's not literally a footnote, but each of them mention either the Iceland Dominion or what they call crazed cultists of the blue flame. And you know that you're that you've been seeing a blue flame. And all of these things are basically to undermine whatever these blue flame people are doing. One of which is literally a thing of, oh, they're they're trying to summon golems and we have to stop them because they're going to obviously attack us with the golems. Another one is there's like a, a spell that is being cast and it's a ritual spell uh, that involves multi steps in a long time. So it's like, go there and stop the spell from being cast. And then the third one is basically it's an envoy from the Ice Crowd's Dominion that's on their way north to where you guys live. And they're basically saying, like, stop them, bar them from entering, and make sure that they turn around and go home. Or, hint, hint, don't show up again. Mm, okay. So Holly Rook turns around with these three quests in her hand and goes, Hey guys, uh, I want to do one of these three, but not tell the group why she wants to do those three. <laughs> Just, hey, these look interesting kind of kind of a thing. Eustace asks, um, do any of them involve ghosts or the undead? Or no, but one involves golems. Sign me up. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go stop some golems if we want. Love it. Tangible enemies. You have uh, golems. There's uh, stop the ritual cast or yep. stop the um, convoy. What about Carbon Fang and I has? Do you guys have any input? No, not particularly. I'll do whatever the group wants to do. All right. So it sounds like you guys want to do one of these quests. Um, and it sounds like Hollybrook wants to do the golem one. Is that correct? Golem works for me. Okay. So there is a like a contact on this so that you can go find this person and get the actual thing. Following the address, you come out to a another like municipal building, um, but this one's not this massive building like the the ministry is. This is probably just like just this is like a regular building, one story tall, with maybe a few rooms. Actually, you know what? It's very similar to the building that you saw in the unaffiliated lands but without the second floor it's that same type of thing where there's like a, a waiting area in the front and other like meeting areas on, off to the side so you guys show up you have this quest off the board this is a d level quest actually no it's a c level quest and they check it out they say okay this is correct um the the person that you need to talk to is in meeting room a so you go down to meeting room a a small meeting room, like there's literally a, a, a rounded table, like maybe an oval table with chairs all around. And there's two people inside. There's a man and a woman. And as they watch you approach, they says, ah, yes, can I help you? So, our, well, we, we've got this quest and we'd like to do it. The woman comes over to you and takes the paper and hands it to the man. And the man reads it over and he says, ah. Uh, you wish to help us with our golem problem, yes? Yes, we would like to fight some golems. So, looking at this man, he's older but not, like, elderly. He's early 50s, tall, lean. He is a human, and he's got, like, salt-and-pepper hair. He's 
very well groomed. You can tell like his hands aren't, you know, well worn and he's dressing to impress, but he definitely is a member of the ministry, which is, you know, these are the people that are allowed to give this type of quest. And he says, ah, well, I thank you for coming. Just outside our borders, our people have come back with reconnaissance saying there are cultists and they are in the process of creating several golems right on the border of our country. They're on the outside, but technically right on our border. Uh, which of you are magic? Not the fighter, not the ranger. Cassandra, give me either an arcana check or a nature check. 15. So the thing about golem, they are made like they're constructed they, they're not naturally occurring um but they're also really expensive to make it's not something that you can just willy-nilly make out of nothing and in order to like create it you have to put in a lot of material and a lot of time um which is also probably why you know you're able to see these people starting and come back and to say like hey someone has to stop them like you still have enough time but it's not necessarily like random and it's not something that's cheap like this is something like i said like there's a lot of labor and a lot of cost involved like literally money cost involved and he has said that there are golems like plural so it's even more so than that so that's just something that you know he hasn't necessarily said anything about that but you know that as a fact and he says these people are creating these golems golems are and this is the thing that you would know and can corroborate golems are controlled by the people who make them and if these people are against us as we believe they are they could easily use these golems as foot soldiers or you know any any type of thing we, we don't know what to expect but you wouldn't create a monster and right on the border of a country if you didn't intend to invade the country with them are golems definitely monsters or can they just be used to like whatever um give me a history check with advantage because, you know, if they're making golems to help their grandmothers. Also, I don't think there's, uh, you know, making golems on a border kind of seems like a reasonable thing to do if you're worried that other people are going to attack you. Like <laughs> with, a, with a 20, Cassandra, you would know that it's not common to have, like, just a utilitarian golem. Like, usually it's used to either defend something, attack something. Yeah, really just one of those two things. It's either like stand or, here and defend this thing. Accounting. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, but you wouldn't know of like someone using it just as a tool. However, with a 20, you would know that. And also with your high um, arcana check, you would know that it's not like impossible. It's not something that's incapable of a golem. It's just not common. Or not heard of. It ha you, you don't. You've never heard of a story like that. But it's plausible. It just hasn't happened yet. So, if you look on um, the maps that we have, did they say how many golems? By the way, uh, they haven't yet decided, or they haven't yet said, but they did say plural. So it's it's at least two, if not more. What if we get out there and it's just a bunch of kids making mud pies? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you like never know. You know, it's like that that neighbor who gets on gets on the local neighborhood app and it's like, there's graffiti all over the streets and it's just <laughs> chalk. Chalk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right on the border. I mean, hey, you, you can't. I can't discredit that. <laughs> so, it if you look at one of the maps, so where the ice shroud dominion is to the south, it's it's very much like mostly the ice, and you guys are inside Astoria Prime, which is the one just above it. On basically the border um, where there's the grass area, that's where the, he points out that he says that's where they are. And what he also says is that they would give you a means of transportation, not necessarily to that point, but to a very close point on our side of the border. Hmm. Didn't Grandma just tell us not to travel very far? I mean, that's not that yeah. far. Should right. a bunch of delinquent kids go face a bunch of golems? <laughs> I mean, you're not delinquent kids. You're just failed college that. students. 
We're, we're taking a, a, a postgraduate year. <laughs> I wouldn't call uh, descending into insanity for six months a sabbatical, but okay. <laughs> so in the notes channel, the X is where they have discovered the activity and the circle is where they're going to bring you. He says, and of course, in addition to credit, you will be compensated from our peacekeeping forces finances. So you will be paid. And in addition, you will have the experience of doing this. If you do this on time, you, you can probably get there before the golems even arrive. You might not have to fight the golems. You might just have to deal with the people trying to summon the golems. Or if you take too long, then, of course, just destroying the golems would work as well. What if we broker a truce with the golems? What if we use this? I just want to know all my options. <laughs> are you are you asking that directly of the, the man or are you asking the DM? <laughs> uh, both. So as you ask the man, he says, well, it's not quite going to be with the golem as the golems are being controlled by these cultists. So... Either take out the cultists or take out the golems one way or the other. If you manage to find a way to convince them to not summon the golem, that would be okay, I suppose. But you would need to find some way of establishing that as fact and not just like, oh, it's a temporary thing. And then you leave and then they start up again. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, it might be advantageous to uh, go to a border, especially after, with some cultists uh, and opposition on the other side, and see what kind of false flag is gonna go down there. <laughs> Holly Brooks asks more about the cultist details, like, what makes them cultists in these folks' eyes? Oh, like, uh, Give me a persuasion check. Hey, a dirty 20. Okay. Uh, with a 20, the, the captain says, ah, well, these people, they're they're not quite the same as, as you know, uh, you or I, and they worship this god of of death and decay. And who, like, why, why would you worship that if you weren't already going to be on the aggressive side of things? Like these people are not civilized; they they only want wish to cause harm. Like that's their whole thing. Just for clarification, and so we know what we're walking into. Is this just based off what they practice in their religion? Give me another persuasion check. You already got a 20, but I want to give me another one. 14. Okay, with a 14. He says, well, I didn't get to talk to them, if that's what you're asking. So we're making a lot of assumptions about these people's motives. And if we go down there, we have to bring you proof that they didn't make a golem. But you don't have to give me any proof that they want to destroy everything before I go kill them. Well, what other explanation would there be? <laughs> they're they're on our border. They're creating a monster with the ability to invade or attack, and they're creating basically a a, a, a mobile unit that they can control from afar. Like, what other like explanation an could there be? Or a well, I th I, th I think what my companion's trying to say is, what are the deliverables we would need to provide you with? That would prove ah. the truth of the of the situation. So you have two options. Each golem is summoned using a book and some type of focus. If you can bring back one of those two items per golem, it would guarantee that the golem can't be used and or summoned. However, should should we find that these golems are produced for, say, agricultural benefit? Mm -hmm. um, sh surely uh, you would not deprive poor innocent children and maybe the community of, of veterans and uh, noble non-death worshipping children and grandparents and mothers of, of some wheat and barley just because of a few bad cultists uh, what, what should we do in that case? Should, should that rarity arrive? I don't see that being the case. So just to be clear, I just yes. want to make sure that I'm clear on this. You want me to cross a country border and then steal someone's religious objects and then come back across the border with them. Well, from what we're what we're aware of is these aren't actually religious items. They're just used in a spell. 
but the people are religious but just because they're religious doesn't make everything they own religious you know would would uh say we do this would this be tantamount to declaration of war of of going across a border invading uh, another country's sovereignty and stealing their as you say it weapons well this this isn't part of the ice shroud dominion this isn't their military this seems to be just like i said cultists and just like in any country if there are cultists that wish to cause harm to the people of any nation uh it is our duty to stop them hmm. duty to stop cultists in another country well that is what we're asking you to do yeah no i'm asking you why it's our duty. like shouldn't they be controlling their own cultists why is it my job well, it's your job in the sense that if they don't do their job, it falls on us. And it seems that the Ice Shroud Dominion has no intention of stopping this. And we don't have enough of a diplomatic connection to request this of them either. Okay, so as far as I can put this together, this dude wants these golems gone, no <laughs> exceptions. You, you definitely get that feeling. Okay. If you want, also give me an insight check. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, he definitely wants the golems gone. He, he's not even, like, trying to hide that. Like, he wants these golems out of the picture. He's not asking you to, like, go deeper into the country and continue this on. It's just, like, this one thing on our border, do it, and then come back. Like I'm being asked to commit a war crime. Here's the thing. And and uh, I say, or uh, Eustace is like, well, um, due to the sensitive diplomatic nature of this, we'll we'll have to think about it. Just just check with our superiors very briefly. A minor, a minor check in, um, and then I kind of like motion like, let's just get out of earshot of this guy. He says, "Understandable. Unless anyone else picks it up, this will be ready for you. Just return when available." And then, uh, as soon as we're out of earshot, I'm like. So he wants us to commit war crimes, right? Like that's <laughs> that's what I'm hearing here. Oh, fucking absolutely. So can, could we afford to go and see what happens and then fail? Should we... Uh... Go ask the CIA if we can commit a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I also wanted to be clear, Eustace really just wanted some some uh, CYA here, uh, and mainly just wanted to double check with everybody out of earshot of that creep. Um, um, okay, well, I will use this time for, uh, would, would Eustace know anything about this, that this particular country and his background, would there be anything, or this territory, excuse me. Uh I would say that, honestly, the first time you've ever had any interaction or experience was probably at the masquerade when um, Hollybrook had met those two people advertising their country. Okay, gotcha. I mean, I think I think canonically Eustace did fail geography. I think I did put that in the character notes, so <laughs> that makes sense. The Ice Shroud Dominion, located on the equator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, C's get degrees, D's get diplomas. <laughs> we could just go and fail. Like, if, if it if it lines up to be what we think it is, we could just be like, well, nope, we failed and put the, the card into a ditch somewhere and throw it out so no one ever finds it again. Um, or we could, uh, if we do find it is something, we could run it up the food chain or the, the org chain and see what's up. So... I guess uh, my, Eustace turns to Hollybrook, who was thinking about it for a while, and <laughs> says, uh, do you still want to pursue this quest? I think we should. Okay. Let's let's go ask the CIA if we can commit a war crime. <laughs> let's uh, let's go get some clearance from H.W. Bush. Uh, <laughs> who says we have to get clearance? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. true. I mean, we could just I go. Mean, if I'm going to cross country borders and murder people, I'd like to have the backing of the government. <laughs> well, I mean, to, to to be fair, this is a government sanctioned quest. It's not yeah. just some random guy asking. And this man works for the ministry, which works for the government. Yeah. I mean, this is well, this was legitimately found on the board. So seal le legit. I mean, uh, give me an investigation check. Sorry, I'm being difficult. No, it's all good. It, you are being smart. <laughs> Listen, they already tried to make us patsies once. Exactly. 
There's already one false flag. We really need to fuck another one? <laughs> 17. Uh, the seal looks completely genuine, um, and this man also looks to be like a, an actual official. Um, you know, you're in an actual ministry building. The, the, the person at the front desk told you to go here. This person is confirming. Um, so, yeah, everything seems to be in order. I mean, we don't have to destroy the golems if we don't have to, but we can at least see what's happening out there. Okay, there's... but I'm not committing any war crimes unless I'm getting points for it. <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> he did well, say it that... was a C-level quest, so you're going to get a good amount of points for it. Can I drop okay. off my book report before we leave? You want to drop off your report? Uh, sure, give me a performance check for how you have been able to write this up because you have been writing on the go. Okay, <laughs> you got a uh, <laughs> you got a six level of this. Uh, you leave it on her desk. She kind of looks through it and she says, uh, "We might need to discuss this later." Uh, <laughs> Can I do a yes. persuasion roll just in case? <laughs> sure, give me a persuasion roll. Twenty. <laughs> Oh my Whoa. god. Okay. He's like, all right, there's enough evidence here, and what you've said, of course, is a, a distinct uh, it, it you you did help someone and you also discovered more information, which may help us in the long run. So for your first one, I'm giving you uh ten points, and for the second one, I'm giving you five. Um, so everybody's gonna get fifteen points for those two. Um, and then you also and then you also get to work on the uh, C level quest, which is a very high high number of points. Huzzah! <laughs> and and the option for more if we commit some war crimes. <laughs> yes. Sounds like the CIA to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, nothing is saying we have to commit war crimes. Yeah, I think Eustace will frame this as this is a fact finding mission for us personally. Iraq. Yeah, <laughs> yes. we want to just send in some um, Astoria Prime. We just want to send in some Astoria Prime sanctioned weapons and nuclear inspectors. That's all we want to do. Well, we just want to look at these are Golem inspectors by the Astoria Prime Marine Corps. <laughs> yeah, the Adventuring Guild uh, Golem inspectors is what we're we're just basically being here. <laughs> Normally, only a T-shirt you see on the beach. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> inspector. You have no idea how much joy I get out of making you silently giggle on video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. <laughs> Does she just show up to a pottery class with that t shirt? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. But, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, where, where do you want to go from here now? You've. You've gone to Gladys, dropped off your report. You've been assigned something. Uh, you can go back to the man and accept it, or really anything you would like. Maybe we should accept the the, the task and then uh, pick it up next time. Oh yeah, I'd say we accept it and then find how to get there. What's the easiest so, way to? So, what are our options for travel? All right. So as Here's you go, him. so you go back to the man. <laughs> Um, in the in the thing, and you 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 accept it from him, right? You say yes. We accept. yes. Okay. Um, and he says, ah, yes. Well, uh, please follow my assistance here, and she will put you on your way. Um, and the woman who was with him uh, stands up and uh, gestures for you to follow her, and she leaves the meeting room to go outside. She leads you. You go outside. Now, where you're at in the um, the town is what's considered like the old district. So this is centuries ago when there was a much smaller city. This was the city. And she goes and she brings you just maybe like a block away to this old. It, it kind of looks like a, a chapel of sorts, but it's kind of old and nondescript at this point. She gestures for you to enter this uh, building. Uh, like Vanna whites the door. Like here you go. <laughs> uh, what is this building? Well, this is uh your your connection to where we're sending you. Oh, is it like a portal? Kind of. That's not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is is Hollybrook familiar with this kind of magic? Uh, I mean, yes, is this um, normal? Ho or Hollybrook and Cassandra both give me Arcana checks. Ugh. 
Nat one. Oh. <laughs> Fill asleep. <laughs> nine. Um, Cassandra, you've at least heard of like different methods of like magical traveling, but you have no idea what to expect. Hollybrook, you have no idea. She, she said it's not a portal, or she said it's like a portal, and you have no idea what that means. <laughs> Obviously, this church is going to grow chicken legs and Baba Yaga you down. <laughs> okay, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in yeah. now. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's my preferred mode of travel, honestly. <laughs> um, so you guys enter into this this church? Um, sure. Is, is there any... Are there any signs of, like, a specific religion? Like... Uh, Yes, this is this is like an old style version of the most generic religion of uh, Astoria Prime, which is one of the uh, the sun gods. Okay. Your body's doing war crimes. <laughs> Come and worship with the most generic religion in town this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so it's it's an old church. It's basically like the equivalent of going to Europe and seeing like a really old church that's no longer used for service, but is still standing and kind of like a testament to where we were 500 years ago. It could uh, Eustace's interest in all things religious um, mm -hmm. would like. To, could I inspect this and appreciate this church and look for any links to any perhaps? Um, enemy religions in terms of our country <laughs> like like I'm, I'm i'm looking at what's what's this deal <laughs> um oh, can i do a religion check to see if this is more of a cult on cult war crime <laughs> um i mean for cassandra what i would actually want from you is yeah an arcana check or religion either way okay uh with a 22 on your religion check you would know that the country that you're in um, and the society that you live in isn't mono uh, cultural in the sense that there are several different religions within this community and within this country as well as city. It's just you having grown up in this country would consider like the more common religions, whereas this blue flame is seen as kind of being other. I guess what I'm trying to figure out if it is, is said ministry man a member mm. of uh, a smaller religious group that is wanting to commit a war crime on a different religious group. Okay. Um, I would say give me an insight check. Okay. 21. Okay. Uh, with a 21, uh, you don't see... Okay, let's put it this way. He doesn't think of this as religious war. Um, he's thinking of this as like, these people want to attack and we have to attack them first. And because... They are this weird religion. It kind of just makes them even more other than they already were. Hmm. So you don't really get the idea that he thinks like, oh, because they're of this cult, we have to destroy them. But also with the 21, I would say that you also realize like he's not necessarily the one calling the shots for this. Um, he's just the one kind of doing the administrative work, the hiring of people to do the job. Um, but he, like he said, he didn't talk to these people. He he wasn't the one that went out and scouted this on the border. He is literally just admin dude. So we're not going to start a holy <laughs> war. Is what I'm hearing, or the likelihood of starting a no, holy no, war. We're not not going to start a holy war. <laughs> I mean, unless unless you show up and say I'm doing this for the sun god and then kill everybody. Lisa then... on Al Ghalib. Lisa on Al Ghalib. <laughs> 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 Um, so All with the that, <laughs> With that, Eustace, what were you saying before? You were trying to look and see if there was like any connections. Yeah, I just kind of want to poke sure. around this. You said it's like um, an you know it's an older yeah, yeah. church um, place of worship. What I would like from Eustace then is a religion check. Okay. Talk scout. What'd you say about a scout? Talk out. I actually scouted. The, the one that went down there and found... Can we talk to them? Uh, I mean, can you have haven't... More information? They haven't really said who was the scout. Um, you 16. Just, I, I would say that with a 16, um, there's really no connection that you can see on the, the surface. Um, this is a religion that has been established 
obviously for hundreds of years in this country. Um, the only bits that you know, Eustace, is what Hollybrook has told you. Um, and it's literally blue flame possibly talks. Um, and the the um, the religion here, because it's about like the 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 sun, the colors are oftentimes yellow and golden. So there's really no like overlap here. It's almost like two opposite sides of the spectrum, literally, like blue versus mm. blue. Um, okay. Okay. But um and, and the other thing, actually, um, what did you get on your religion check? A sixteen? Uh, right? Yeah. Right enough. Um one of the domains of this religion is life. And you know that they've been saying like, oh, these are death worshiping cultists. So it's like literally, again, the opposite end of the spectrum. But there's no there's no indication that these two are in conflict. They're just two separate things. Gotcha. OK, that actually answered all the questions I was going to ask. There you go. All right. So church your Vanna White, <laughs> what would you like to do? So Hollybrook looks at the group and goes, do you think this is safe? Since she obviously doesn't know Jack <laughs> with her nat one. <laughs> I inf- Since you're already dead, I think you're fine. <laughs> yeah, Eustace, Eustace, would, would Eustace know that Hollybrook is dead? I, yes, at this point, everybody in the yeah. party is aware. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the religion check, uh, Eustace will genuinely probably be like, hey, nothing, I don't think there's anything to worry about here so far. If it gets to that part, we'll we'll deal with it. Trust me, you know, your welfare is more important than, you know, crazies. Um, I'd say we're going. Yeah. Right this yeah. way. All right. You enter into the building. Um, it's an old stone building. It's made out of flagstone, a very nice masonry where like all of the blocks are like perfectly aligned um but there's no you know grout in between so this is something where they were stacked and interlocked perfectly um old style of building that they don't really do anymore um on the back end you see a big mosaic um the mosaic it depicts a large bearded man's face with some type of crown on its head um and in front being just like a group of people you see someone wearing like a hooded cloak you see another person in armor and another person kind of wearing formal clothes despite this being a common religion this this image really doesn't mean anything to you per se um although hollybrook you are a cleric give me a religion check let so that was gonna be my next thing but i got a 20 on that one so i couldn't justify anything after that <laughs> okay with a 10 yeah it, like this is it's not wrong. It's not like, oh, this is not supposed to be here. Um, but you're just not familiar enough with this particular iconography to really c- pick anything up. Um, looking at the space itself, it's rather dark. Like a lot of more modern temples have a lot of uh, glass windows that let in natural light and or have lots of candles and sources of light. So that is bright on the inside. Um, but this building seems to be very dimly lit. There's a few candles uh, here and there, giving kind of flickering light. It, it, like, any type of window that's here is very dirty, so you're not getting bright light in here, but it's it's enough that you can see. No one's blind. And you see that there's a few, like, seating areas in the, in the front, and they face each other, kind of, like, looking in from the left and right. And then after about 30 feet of that is just open space. Um, looking at the open space, there's another mosaic on the ground. It's a big circle and then different symbols inside that at first glance doesn't mean anything to you. Okay. Hollybrook looks at the group. Does anybody recognize this? Um, everybody can give me either Arcana or Religion. So be it. Hey, a 13. Let's see if Hollybrook actually has something. Nope. <laughs> She's still rolling her axe tonight. For a, for, <laughs> for a cleric, you have a plus zero to religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Cassandra and Carbon Fang, you see this uh, circle on the ground, and once you see the symbols, you realize that this is some type of portal. Um, it's not going to be like a thing where you instantly like fall through or something like that, but it is like once you go on to that, you're probably going to be transported elsewhere. So it's unclear how we'll get back. Um, I think with an 18 and a 22, you would realize that whatever's right here, this symbol, is also elsewhere. 
and then it's reversible. Oh, okay, so it's a two-way portal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So does the group go and use this transport? Has anybody used this form of transportation before? I would say that you of the fighting, like of of the six of you here, I don't think any of you have actively used this method of transportation because usually, like this is this is a long distance transportation. Um, usually, what you guys have done in the past has been short distance, so just using a coach or a, tr a train or an airship or something that would be preferred. Um, Go ahead and skip into this sigil while yelling, I can shoot fire from my hands. Why would I not trust this? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Cassandra skips into the center of the circle. Are the others following? If it's good yeah, enough for her. All right. Everybody goes into the circle. The edges of the circle glows with a bright light um, from floor to ceiling. And then it comes back down. And it's just ever so different now and you realize you're in a new church oh, for lack of a better term like you're in a different version of the same thing you have the same ground sigil but the backsplash of this image is different like it's not the same one but the, the church in itself feels like the same type of building so it's you know built the same way is it normal for a church to run a transportation service um Give me a history check. Pope has a limo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another in that one. <laughs> You've never stepped inside a church in your life. <laughs> How did you become a very cleric? Good cleric is she? <laughs> well, that was kind of the point of her, but there for a while she was rolling too good. Now it's... Yeah, it's, it's either rolling too good or should. too bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have no idea why this church has a, has a, has a summoning circle. But you are in a new location, and if if what they had said is true, you would be now way down uh, on the southern border of your country. Is there anybody in this room? In this room? No. Isn't that odd? Wouldn't there be, they'd be there? I don't know. Uh, I think there'd be... There's a door outside. Y Eustace says, oh, shoot, I forgot something, and he steps back into the portal. I mean, you're already in the portal. <laughs> okay. Can I step out and then step back in? Okay. Everybody steps out of the portal. Uh, Eustace steps back in. Give me an Arcana check. Okay. Um, 12. So you might have expected it to just zoom you back in. It doesn't do that, but you also don't get the feeling like, oh, it's broken or it's not going to let me do this. There's just one extra step that isn't being done, but you don't feel... Like, you're not trapped. This wasn't some type of trap to get you down here and out of the way. Okay, so it wasn't a, it's not a one-way trip. It's, it's not just a one-way trip. The flight isn't leaving yet. The flight's not ready yet, basically. <laughs> exactly, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. And if, if you think about it, having a portal into the capital on the border might not be the best thing to just leave open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, that makes sense. The middle war trying to get another ticket. <laughs> can I, can I, yeah, can I intuit what that next other thing is to get back? Just just um, for future yeah, reference. Uh, either give me a religion or history check, one way or the other. All right, I will go with religion. Hey, 21. Okay. Finally. Um, this, this sigil needs to be activated. There, there is like an activation service, um, mm -hmm. and there would be someone here to activate this portal. Um, and you know that someone has to be here because someone had to have recently turned this portal on in order for it to be transported to. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. The magic ingredient is always blood. <laughs> <laughs> Do I notice the same type of sun, sun god, life, etc. stuff in this one? Yeah, so this is the same okay. religion. Um, the backsplash is a little different, but it's still the same stuff. Gotcha. Um, okay. On this, cool. On this, this image is literally just a sun, like a radiant sun. Whereas, before, yeah, I like that better. Faces and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Get the faces out of here. We don't need the faces. <laughs> All right. So, uh, with that, there's a door out of here, or just a church building. What would you like to do? Is this in like the basement, or is this in? No. Oh, you just walked in circle. <laughs> okay. All right. So this we is just potlucks right in the circle. <laughs> this is. This is <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, this is the the Fellowship Hall. This is the. All right, gotcha. Well, is there a potluck going on? Are there hot dishes or? <laughs> You don't, you, don't, you, don't, we can dig into. you don't smell any hot dish. Sorry. <laughs> spaghetti night was when? Yes. Spaghetti night is Wednesday. This is Thursday. Sorry. <laughs> well, what does that mean? It's fish hey, night. Don't we have fish? Fine. No, fish is on Friday. No, fish is on Friday. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but only, only during the spring. <laughs> All right. Do you want to leave that? <laughs> Guys, I think Adam wants to leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> all right so you leave the church yep. going outside you meet someone again uh dressed very uh formally and this is another member of the ministry they kind of just take note of like who's here so the this this man actually asks for if you have a group name or if you're going by individual names group name for now i think would be good and what is the group did we ever name? come yeah. up with one no, I don't think we did. I think he could just call us the CIA. We are <laughs> out here committing war crimes. I mean, here's the thing. If Nymets is, is an unknown in this world, so is CIA. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he has no frame of reference for what that means, so he just writes down CIA. <laughs> <laughs> S-E-E-E-Y-E-A-Y-E? E H. CIA. CIA? All right, well, you have... Uh, he marks you down and he says, okay, uh, and he gives you basic directions on how to get to the location. Uh, you're going to basically follow the shore around the bay, and once you get down to the south edge of the bay, you'll actually reach the border of Alorium and uh, the Ice Rod Dominion. Huzzah! So uh, you won't be able to get anything there per se but what i would like is for everybody to give me a survival check just as a group um this will be a group survival check just to see how well you can navigate uh your way to uh the border oh now hollybrook rolls decently <laughs> thank god because i got a three <laughs> <laughs> three nine sixteen eleven and nineteen hey uh, okay all right uh, pretty, pretty even distribution there I'm just screaming because the grass is wet. <laughs> <laughs> as long as Myrtle doesn't get like a nat one or something, I think you're fine. Well, oh, fuck. Oh, what? Well, that one. Okay, I gotta do some math. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not like you actively made it a one. I locked myself out of my <laughs> memory earlier with a nat one. It's okay. It's fine. Um, okay, actually, you know what? Um, you are... So the total amongst you is 60, which makes you an average of 10 um, out of the six of you. So you 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 take your time, um, but eventually you will make it to the border. Uh, you don't make it to the border until evening, though. Um, at this point, you're going to need to make camp. Did any of you bring a tent um, or a bedroll at the very least? I have a bet roll. I have a very weird, uh, was it large predatory I, cat skin? <laughs> I, I have, I have a bet. Let's say I have blankets. I have a tinder box. I've got rations for a day. A water skin. All right. Well, I, I, I've also got my uh, figure of wonder power. <laughs> um, with your um. With your sleeping bags and with your tinder box and all of that together, uh, you're able to make camp. What I would like for everybody who rolled already under a 10, so Cassandra, Eustace, and Myrtle, can you give me one more survival check? Um, and this is, uh, you're, you're the you know the weak link, so let's see if you uh, survive the night. Oh, we got a five. No. Six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm used to staying in these nice hotels. In the story, uh, this campaign so far, Eustace has gotten used to it. Sixteen. I don't think that was enough. Um, let me just. So that would be twenty-seven divided by three. Nine. So unfortunately, 
not great. So something's going to happen over the night. We'll come back to that Ooh. next time. <laughs> uh, next time on Remedial Adventures. <laughs> on the CIA. CIA. <laughs> colon. In the next episode, another cat fucks Eustace up. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Thank you for listening to Romelio Adventure. The intro outro song is Thinking Doc by Anachronite, and our various ambient tracks are by Bartify. Our players have asked to remain anonymous, at least for now, but I have been your DM, Adam Souza. I'm putting together the next episode now, which should go live in about two weeks. So thanks again for listening, and I hope to see you again. There you go. We end the game tonight. We all just dress up as sheep and live our own lives. The end. <laughs>